the group of Canal Lens Water Purification System. My name is Maria Ramayo, this is Gabriel Lopez, and Abel Mowat. This is a presentation outline, so we will be talking about the problem um, statement, we'll talk about our global impact, our design, the components, uh, some testing, engineering analysis, and we'll finish with the conclusion and future work. So, uh, in the world we have uh, 750 million people lacking of clean water, and among these people, they have um, many women and children walking um, hours during the day to find water, and it's not even clean, and many of them die uh, during the year due to water-related diseases. So our motivation is to create a, a, a unit which is um, powered by renewable energy, which is solar energy, and for us to produce um, clean water for them to alleviate that human necessity. So with the contemporary issues right now, uh, there are engineers working on this. However, they produce this in larger scales, so they need bigger machinery, it's not cost efficient, and it's not environmentally friendly. Our global impact would be to create this and make it environmentally friendly, alleviate this human necessity, and this could be used around the world, wherever they, they have um, solar energy. All right, so this is our system outline. Here you can see we have a large part of the filter, uh, a large res uh, reservoir for unprocessed water, the Fernal lens, a boiler, a condenser, and a reservoir for clean water. Uh, these are just our ideas. That was already the original design. It was to use some sheet metal to reset between the sun no, and the tubes. Or water like that. Later we changed the design to something more like this. Um, last semester someone made a comment about the the footprint of the project. So what we did instead, we did a vertical design. So these are just two other designs we came up with. And this is, as you can see there, that's our final design. Uh, these are just some measurements of the prototype, so you can see it's really not that big. Um, as it comes to the major components of our, of our project, um, one main thing we wanted to cover was the front end lens. Um, it's made out of plastic. It acts as a magnifying glass. One side, the side that faces the sun is the rigid side, so it can better um, focus the sun rays on a singular point. Um, we chose a linear type lens because we wanted the heat to spread across multiple tubes instead of focusing on a specific spot. And the lens is about two by two by three feet. Um, we chose a boiler was very important because we wanted to filter different types of water. So we didn't we had options of like metal boilers, uh, aluminum boilers, but we chose the um, solar tube for a reason because it's a, it has a vacuum vacuum layer. So once the heat goes in, it doesn't come out. So whatever we collect is stored um, it's, because it's glass and it has like a black surface. It absorbs everything and and keeps whatever is inside hot. Um, for the condenser, we chose a radiator. So we had steam in to we had steam in in one point and um, water out in another point. We had two reservoirs. We had a six gallon reservoir, six gallon reservoir where we could uh, store water once it's filtered through the large particle filter, and then we have a two and a half gallon plastic reservoir to store the clean water for dispensing. As you can see. Um, for our for, to get the water into the tubes last semester again. Um, we wanted it to be gravity fed, but that was a limitation of our system, so we looked into a siphoning pump. So once you start pumping the water from the dirty reservoir, it would have a continuous flow rate into the tube as the water would boil out. So you would not, once you start it up, you would be, you'd be good to go. Um, we also have a swivel, um, a lazy system at the bottom, so because the sun position changes throughout the day, so you, you could adjust the lens as it goes, and you could also adjust the lens. Um, for the, the black tiles, are coated in a higher resistant spray to protect it from heat because the lens generates high heat and we wanted to protect the unit itself while the prototype was on, on the unit. Alright, so this is the prototype. Um, this is the vaporizer dog. Does it come with the dog? Alright, so these are the features of our prototype. Uh, here you have the angle selector on the sides. Uh, that way you can adjust the position of the lens throughout the day as the sun changes position. This is the swivel at the bottom of the, of the prototype. That way, once again, you can also change the position the other way. 
these are the tiles. We put some hot, some uh, ceramic tiles behind the tubes to protect the wood. We spray coated them with um, like high temperature paint. And uh, this is the water dispenser where the clean water is at the bottom. Uh, this is just uh, some steps of the construction. The first thing we did was we made a one-to-one -one scale drawing on a piece of cardboard just to have an idea what it would look like. And then here you can see different stages of the process. Um, here, uh, those are the evacuated cylinders, which we're also missing one now. Um, here, this is just the inlet for the water. The water uh, dirty water goes in here. And this is where the clean water comes out, basically steam. Uh, this is just testing the pump, just to make sure we had a constant flow. And this is a boiling test. This is us actually using the product. We took about two minutes to do this with when we actually had uh, some sun. Here you can see the steam is actually coming out of the tube and into the plastic tubes. Uh, we also conducted some engineering analysis. Our first one was to calculate uh, how much solar power input we would get. And since the uh, Earth rotates around the sun and it also changes positions throughout the day, we calculated that for the um, uh, summer solstice, which, which is uh, June 22nd, we would collect the, um, the large amount of power and we could produce um, much more water. And during winter uh, solstice, uh, we would produce around uh, 0 0.5, 500 milliliters per tube. Um, during the day, because we had less um, less hours, and for the summer solstice, sorry, we, we could produce 0.800 milliliters per tube. This is also an analysis that we conducted on SolidWorks simulating the tube. Uh, as you can see in the in the first picture, there's a tube uh, on the outside, and it simulates that it's cold temperature, and in the inside, it's really hot because of the boiling water. All right. So for flow analysis, as we mentioned before, we wanted to do this gravity fed. The problem with that is that it would overflow the, the evacuated cylinders. So what we did instead, we used the siphoning pump to move the water from the reservoir to, to the tubes, and that would limit the level of water, the maximum level of water inside this tube. So when this reservoir is full, the maximum level in the tube will be about halfway, and once this is empty, then so is the other. Uh, as I said before, we calculated the water production uh, throughout the day. And we also uh, researched online how um, the, the water quality, and we found standards from the World Health, Health Organization uh, about the pH, water conductivity, and, and those things that um, drinkable water needs. This is our cost analysis. Uh, we included all the materials that, that we use for our prototype, and our target budget or cost was uh, $300, and we spent $324, which is not that much but we try to keep it very cost efficient. And for environmental impact, um, this is very environmentally friendly, as I said before, it uses renewable energy, it doesn't produce any toxic waste, and or any other emissions, and the materials are not uh, harmful for the environment. So these are the testing results uh, from our water production. We conducted this test on November 17. It was partly clouded, and we produce around uh, 200, 200 milliliters in two hours out of 700 milliliters. And we have compared this to our theoretical, uh, also to our theoretical um, number also. And as you can see, the theoretical was uh, 180, and it was not that much of a difference what we produce. And this is per tube in two hours. So um, here at the environmental lab, we conducted several tests because the whole point of this was to test on if your water is safe to drink. So we tested, we did certain tests such as the conductivity test, pH test, um, and a hardness test. And also um, we tested three types of water, dirty water, the concentrated after what's boiled and left to see what's left, and what we actually got the clean water. Um, so, for the, so as our starting point, we tested um, tap water versus pure, pure water, deionized de water to see the micro sins to compare with our actual test results. So as you can see, the unprocessed water had the double the amount of micro sins as tap water, um, and the concentrated water almost tripled that to show the amount of particles and salt left in the water. 
but our process order was really low and almost complete. So you can see that it got less. There's all the minerals are. Um, for the pH test, um, drinking water is usually between 6.5 and 8.5. Um, the process water, unprocessed water, which is the dirty water we got from the lake, was around 8.5, so it was safe to drink according to pH, but you never know if you might have a bacteria or something. Our concentrated water was not, it's not safe it was outside the limit. And our processed water was a little bit below what we got, but um, it was in an emergency situation, you could still drink it. But if you had another use for it, such as cleaning or where well, it's more than safe to use. Um, we also tested for phosphorus. And uh, we did a calcium carbonate test to see how much um, how hard water was. And you can see it was little to no mirrors or salts there. Um, these are. So here uh, we did an E. coli test. So basically, what we did is we put uh, different water samples and uh, these little test tubes. We left them in an incubator for 24 hours, and then these are our results. So the unprocessed water, the original color was purple, which means there's a, it comes out negative. So unprocessed water uh, turned white, so it's positive, which means it's not really safe to drink. Our control was tap water, which stayed purple. And then one of our samples of the processed water turned yellow. However, we still have one more that did not. So we think it's pretty safe to, to drink. We learned challenges that our team um, faced, and the biggest one was uh, being very cost efficient since we were um, since we didn't have any sponsor, and we also had um, to we also had a constraints of time, so we had to be um, we had to have a lot of time management, and also using only solar energy that was another big challenge. And these are the standards that, that we follow in order to produce um, in order to to check if our water was safe to drink. We found standards from the World Health Organization, and as as I mentioned before, uh, the the level of pH should be between 6.5 and 8.5, and it shouldn't have any uh, coliform because that would produce any coli. So for the future of this project, we wanted to add a solar tracker to the lens, so it would be able to track the sun's position automatically throughout the day, um, and move both axes through actuators. Um, we also wanted our project in the future to also desalinate water because we tried to choose the material as best as possible, something that would not corrode and could actually desalinate water. But um, we haven't found a good way to get rid of the brine, which is all of the processed salt that would be left inside the tube. Um, we want the prototype to be self-cleaning, and we also want to build a system enclosure for it for two reasons: we, um, for safety reasons, so you can't go touch while it's in use. And also for um, convection, so there's no protects it from the wind while it's boiling, so you have as minimal heat losses as possible. So in conclusion, um, our friend Lens was able to purify water and can provide an alternate means of providing clean water in emergency, emergency situations. Um, and although more testing needs to be done to see the full capacity and capabilities of our system, we, we, it worked as intended. So throughout this process, we learned a lot. You know, we developed skills we never had, applying actual engineering knowledge to build and make something. We all gained carpentry skills throughout the entire process. Um, learning from a flow and flow, and working together as a team, and seeing what it is to like really be an engineer, make starting a project and finishing a project. Um, these are um, the responsibilities that we did throughout the project. We all worked in everything. And we open, leave it up. open to any questions. I guess I'll start. Uh, first question I wanted to ask you was about um, the potential of transferring from the boiling chamber back to the condenser liquid versus the vapor. Uh, have you uh, looked at putting a valve in there or something in there to protect? Uh, to ensure that you never put contaminated water across into your condenser? No, well, the thing is, the only about half of that tube should be full. Like, it should never really go that high. So you're not, you shouldn't get So why did you get water. one of your samples that showed yellow response? Uh, it was probably cross-contamination in the lab when we were putting the sample in the tubes. We took the water from the same 
source and reported in two tubes, one came out negative, one came out positive. So this had to be contaminated sometime during the lab because it's just from the same testing sample. From the test tube prep? Or? Yeah, when we, were, when we took the water report into the tubes, and so it's the same source, so all of them came out, came out one came out yellow, so it has to be contaminated at some point during that. If the rest came out negative. Okay. What happened to the other evaporator tube? We dropped it. You, dro you dropped it, physically class, dropped it? So it's yeah, we it. So we had to modify the project, the change the plumbing. As you can see in one of the pictures, we had it for two, and then we just quickly modified. So it, it does so. highlight the point that you've got to protect those. Exactly. Yes. 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 Exactly. Yes. exactly. You're your own witness of that. And then the last question I have is uh, about using um, distilled water right. to drink. Uh, mm. Have you looked at remineralizing the water? Yes, yes, actually in the lab the professor gave us, which is in the report, <coughs> I mean, there is a way to remineralize the water, which is really not that complicated, but it can be done. So we just didn't include it here. It's in the report. Okay, thank you. I got a question. Go ahead. Well, it's going back to what Chip mentioned. In the video you showed, it, it seemed to be boiling Peter vigorously. And, and yes, it, it would go back. I think you might have some drops getting through. Well, in that video, we filled out the tube pretty much all the way because if you can see the tube, it's like it has that angle coating, so you can't really see it. Right. So oh, in order okay. to like actually show it, we tried to fill it up as much as, as we possible. could, so it could actually. I, mean, show I like something. the idea. That's what I always told people in class: I'm gonna make it simple and be able to move it anywhere without power and all that. But uh, I like the idea on it. Now, where'd you get the E. coli from? Again. We tested it in the lab. Well, the professor special water dimension just so we could test for bacteria. So, and the day of testing, as I said, we were pouring the water from the same source into all the tubes. And when, when, when the professor was in, like, it was shorter that the tubes, one of them had already come out yellow. Oh, no, that's not what I meant. I meant, oh. in general, you have what to have a source. source. What was your water source? Oh, I went to a canal. Uh, your lake. Your lake. <laughs> 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 I went to a lake and got some water in came Wow. Um, can I have you pull it around a little bit so we can see kind of the layout of where all the components are? You don't mind? Okay, so kind of a kind of a follow up also to one of the concerns of, of water coming of un unboiled water. Um, reaching its way into the condenser and eventually into your, your final reservoir. Um, you guys are using, there are certain things you guys can use to your advantage in your layout. Because you're using a siphon pump, the input doesn't have to be at a high level. And I think maybe from a user, user comfort or ergonomic point of view, um, to have to pour water up into a high point as opposed to a low point via whatever means they have to carry. Uh, it might be better to bring that in and use your siphon pump to, pump it to its full oh, advantage. Oh, I agree. Um, similarly, when you're boiling water, steam naturally rises. Most distilling processes intentionally force the steam to go as high as possible before they condense it back down to a coiling mechanism or anything of that sort. So again, you could then bring your condenser further up to the point where, right. Mm -hmm. Similarly, your reservoir then can actually also be brought up to more comfortable level for mm -hmm. consumption. For water. Exactly. So like I said, I think maybe with your layout, you could have done a little bit better job of using all your components that you've selected well to, to a greater functionality. When you were out in the sun, how did, how did you aim the Fresno lens? Was it obvious that the yeah. The apex of this was yeah. shining it, on your tubes. focal point, like, you, well, you when it's like out of focus, you just see like a big light. And then when it's in focus, it just turns into like a little light about six yeah. inches long. So it's, yeah. it's really yeah. obvious yeah. Yeah. when you can really hit this button. And wherever you are in the world, you can calculate it like this. For example, we're very close to the tropic. So our lens doesn't need to be that high. It can be uh, this low because the sun, you know, um, it's, the sun rays are directed straight to the, to the equator. So. If you were in another part of the world, maybe in the equator or something, you could put it off here or in the, in the highest angle. Thank you very much. Thank you.